Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the important skin emergency that is Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. These both diseases, Steven Johnson and toxic epidermal necrolysis, are two varieties of same disease. They are cutaneous hypersensitivity reaction especially to drugs or any other uh, material which we consume can produce Steven Johnson syndrome. But it is classically observed in patients who has history of new drug intake or sometimes the drug interactions with other drugs can also produce this problem. It is characterized by blisters and epidermal detachment that is very important. Many other diseases you can see blisters but here epidermal detachment can be there. This is, this is occurring because of the epidermal necrosis and there will be substan substantial dermal inflammation. The common drugs which can produce Steven Johnson syndrome are mainly sulfur drugs. So nowadays we are not using sulfur drugs because of this problem. But many patients who take sulfur drugs because of urinary tract infection, upper respiratory tract infection, all these patients we can see this. Nevirapine, that is an anti-HIV drug, that also can produce nearly 30% of the patients uh, who can develop Steven Johnson syndrome. Allopurinol, that is one drug which is used in gout treatment, can also produce uh, Steven Johnson syndrome. And we can see in patients who take allopurinol, if they uh, if they taking some other drugs like penicillin, in that patients also sometimes we can see this type of problem. Lamotrigin, other anti-convulsive convulsive drugs and NSAIDs. So most important causes for Steven Johnson syndrome is sulfur drugs and NSAIDs, what we see in our clinical practice. There are so many other drugs also can have Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. But uh, many other drugs can also produce drug allergies, drug rashes, fixed drug eruptions. They are not. They are all not come under the classification of uh, this uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis or Steven Johnson syndrome because they are only skin rashes are there. Here, epidermal necro necrosis is occurring. That is the difference and discoloration of the skin can be seen in many patients. One of the important feature of uh, drug rashes, drug induced allergies, oral cavity also involved whereas in other types of uh, uh, skin reactions or uh, if you take viral fevers, exanthematous viral fevers, one of the important differential diagnosis what we have to understand is patient who is having infectious mononucleosis, that is a viral disease. And many a times doctors unknowingly start um, penicillin, amoxicillin in this group of uh, patients and they de suddenly develop uh, uh, skin rashes throughout the body. Sometimes this can be uh, uh, misdiagnosed as uh, drug rashes but their oral cavity will not be involved. But whereas in Steven Johnson syndrome induced by a drug Oral cavity involvement is very very important and that is seen in most of the patients. Drug induced hypersensitivity there are four important type, type 1 anaphylactic reactions, type 2 cytotoxic reactions, type 3 immune complex mediated reactions, type 4 cell mediated reactions. In that you can see type 2, type 4 are uh, coming under this type of problems like uh, uh, Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. <coughs> so the pathology is uh, uh, the, that uh, granulation release from the cytotoxic T cells and natural killer cells. Uh, they play an important role in uh, keratinocyte death, uh, granulosin concentration in blister fluids correlate with the severity of the disease. Now, what we should understand is depending on the skin area involvement, body surface area involvement, this problem, this skin problem is uh, divided into three major categories. 
Steven Johnson syndrome means less than 10% of the body surface area is involved. Toxic epidermonephrolysis means more than 30% of the body surface area is involved. The overlap syndrome is 10 to 30 percent of the body surface area is involved. Whatever it is, here there is necrosis of the epidermal layer and discarnation of the skin occurs. Initially, it starts with blisters. If it is less than 10 percent, we can call it as Steven Johnson. If it is more than 30 percent, toxic epidermal necrolysis. And if it is uh, in between, there is an overlap syndrome. We can see here 10 overlap and Steven Johnson syndrome depending on the body surface area involvement. So 10%, 30%, 10 to 30%. That is a classification. Now we can see the clinical features. Many patients can have extensive skin rashes in Steven Johnson. Uh, syndrome or TAM. So, prognosis will be poor if patient is having old age, uh, lung involvement, other organ involvement, then prognosis will be very poor. The rash starts as macules that develop into capules, vesicles, bullae, articarial plagues, confluent erythema. Lesions soon become bullous and later rupture, leaving uh, denoded skin. This leads to secondary skin infection. That is very important. We will discuss about that afterwards. So, you can see the skin all over the body can be involved, but typically it also involves the dosum of hand, extensor surfaces of the hand also mostly involved. So, this is also one of the important feature of drug induced rashes. Uh, most of the viral fevers, viral exanthems come only on the trunk of the body, but oral cavity involvement and involvement as are very classical of drug induced problem. Nails, eyebrows also involved. Different types of eye involvement can be there. Then skin can skin can discarment that is also possible. Most of the time there will be uh, leaking from the skin so that can lose lot of uh, uh, fluid from the body, lot of protein from the body. The patient can have fluid loss and hypoalbuminemia can be seen in many patients because of the uh, weeping skin. <coughs> so we have discussed that skin lesions are red skin macules macules then it forms uh, skin sloughing, mucal erosions, mucosal erosions, all these uh, problems can occur. Conjunctivitis can also occur in many patients. Another important sign is Nikolsky sign. Nikolsky sign is when we rub on the skin with the lateral traction, induce a blister on the skin that is Nikolsky sign that is or that is seen in Steven Johnson syndrome. Mucous membrane involvement is very very classical in Steven Johnson syndrome uh, that can differentiate from other viral bacterial skin infections. So mucous involvement, mucosal involvement and hand involvement are one of the major features of uh, Steven Johnson syndrome. Mucosal involvement can be there in many patients, oral cavity ulcers, oral cavity lesions can be there in 71 to 100%, ocular involvement 50 to 78%, genital mucosal involvement 40 to 63% and uh, all other locations can be there up to 50%. So mucosal and genital involvement also classically seen in Steven Johnson syndrome. Now, there is a mortality score for Steven Jan Johnson syndrome that is Scrotten score, score. So from the score we can understand what is the mortality for the patient by seeing this chart you can easily understand what is the mortality rate of the patient. 
we can predict the mortality right but remember in steven johnson syndrome mortality is less than 10% you can just remember 10 less than 10% of the body surface is involved there so mortality can be predicted as less than 10% but tn mortality is more than 30% but if you want to know the exact number of mortality then you can go for the uh, spartan score that is severity of illness score for toxic epidemic necrolysis <coughs> now when we discuss about the management of uh, uh, steven johnson syndrome or any other skin lesion it is like treating a patient who is having burns so the patient's skin is already burned or necrosis has occurred so we will not be able to prevent the onset of the disease because it has already occurred so we can only treat the patient with supportive measures so immediately we have to stop the drug if the patient is on allopurinol stop the drug immediately so that it will not the problem may not spread further then airway breathing circulation has to be taken care because most of the patients airway edema can be there but airway edema acute airway edema is a classical feature of anaphylaxis not a feature of uh, steven johnson syndrome but patient can have diffused oral laryngeal esophageal ulcers that can sometimes produce difficulty in breathing secondary infections all these things so airway can be compromised in some patients but uh, not routinely we we cannot see routine involvement of uh, uh, lung involvement in steven johnson syndrome but post admission many patients can develop secondary pneumonia secondary lung infections so airway has to be taken care airway breathing has to be taken care then circulation that is one important problem like burns here also patient is having extensive skin lesion patient can lose large amount of uh, uh, fluid from the body through this uh, weeping uh, wounds patient can have hypoalbuminemia that also can produce sometimes hypotension so volume resuscitation same like in a patient who is having burns that is very important but uh, burns will produce an acute and extensive problem here it's a progressive problem that difference is there but volume assessment should be done every day volume should be replaced if albumin is low we can correct that also uh, if uh, uh, patient is having hypoalbuminemia other important things are electrolyte imbalance many patients can have an inadequate nutrition because they are they will not be able to take oral feeds most of the patients with steven johnson syndrome will have acute shortage of nutrition so that should be corrected electrolyte imbalance should be corrected since there is a, a breach in the skin uh, uh, immunity skin barrier so patient can have uh, infections all over the body so that should be prevented by reverse isolation then uh, adequate dressing a surgeon's help is required uh, for a, a proper dressing of this uh, skin some patients may require skin grafts uh, or skin substitutes should be tried in this type of patients if the management is something surgical management is something like a, a burn patient so that can be tried drugs now steroids are recommended by some uh, authorities previously nowadays uh, we should understand that steroid has got no major role in steven johnson syndrome management if it is an, if it is an acute emergency like anaphylaxis or acute drug rashes we can try steroids but as as of now in uh, steven johnson syndrome there is no role for steroids because the damage has already occurred whether it is immune mediated or something else the damage is already occurred we will not be able to prevent that uh, with a, a steroid dose after occurring the uh, lesion but uh, when we use steroid sometimes it can uh, adversely affects the patient because it can uh, lead to uh, secondary skin infection so steroid usage are not indicated for steven johnson syndrome even then some physicians give steroids in acute phase to prevent acute inflammation but uh, it should not be continued and whatever it is steroids are not recommended as standard protocol 
Cyclosporin is one immune modulator that is tried in many patients that inhibit CD8 cells, can decrease the duration of active disease uh, by 2 to 3 days. But major advantage is not there even then cyclosporin is, is a uh, adjuvant therapy in C1 Johnson syndrome. This is also not a recommended choice in Stephen Johnson syndrome or TEN. 3 to 5 mg per kg per oral OD is the dose. Plasma exchange is also tried but this is also not an indicated treatment. IVIG also tried 2.7 gram per kg 3 days also tried but all this treatment they are all uh, uh, they are all not uh, having a definitive role in Stephen Johnson syndrome. The treatment of Stephen Johnson syndrome is mainly supportive and to prevent skin infection we have to be very careful. Reverse isolation is recommended treatment for uh, Stephen Johnson syndrome. As in uh, uh, burns, the, here also skin lesions are there, secondary infections can occur. <coughs> Other treatments are mainly we have already discussed that patient can have severe fluid depletion because patient is losing continuously fluid from the skin. So fluid deficiency is very very important. Many patients can have hypoalbuminemia that also should be corrected. Electrolyte imbalance can be there in many patients that also should be corrected. Most of the patients will not be able to take any nutrition because peroral route will not be possible and sometimes IV also not possible because the complete discoamation of this patient will not be able to put in peripheral IV line. Most of these patients may require a central line with total parental nutrition initially. Once the patient uh, is able to take oral feeds then we can uh, uh, start oral feeds that is very important because uh, as soon as uh, possible uh, once the patient is stabilized and patient is able to take oral feeds Immediately we have to start the oral feeds that is very important. Till then total parental nutrition can be continued. Another important area of concern is pain. Most of these patients will have severe pain. We will not be able to give uh, 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 like uh, NSAIDs or other pain relieving measures. We can go for opioids uh, in uh, this type of pain, fentanyl, morphine all can be tried. tried because the pain will be very very severe in Stephen Johnson syndrome like burns the skin pain will be very severe pain then infection prevention practice is very important hand washing uh, and reverse isolation all these things are very important uh, like uh, we, 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 to prevent uh, hospital acquired infection we have to be very careful in patient who is having Stephen Johnson syndrome Ophthalmic therapy is very important because most of the patients will have uh, uh, lesions in the eyelids, lesions even in the uh, eyes, uh, can have inflammation in the eyes. So uh, that part should be taken care of by an ophthalmologist. We can uh, add uh, tear substitutes, antibiotic, whatever is recommended we can use it. So we have uh, discussed about one important clinical problem that is Stephen Johnson syndrome or toxic epidemic necrolysis. Both are same type of disorders. In both condition the necrosis of epidermis occurs and the skin discrimination occurs. All are mostly due to a drug or drug interactions uh, can produce skin immune mediated destruction. There is no major definitive treatment for this problem. Stop the drug which is producing Stephen Johnson syndrome. Supportive therapy is very very important. Patient should be treated as burned patients. Special area should be identified to treat this type of patients because patient can have secondary skin infection. They can also have hospital acquired infection hypotension, dyselectylemia, so many problems can occur for this patient and when we discharge the patient it should be clearly mentioned that the drug, the offending drug should, should be clearly mentioned in the discharge summary so that next time patient will not develop the same problem because 
any reaction first time may be mild if it occurs second time the reaction will be very very severe and it will be life threatening thank you